All right, all right. Good, good evening, everybody. Okay, we are live. New life, we're live. Let's go. Let's go, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Facebook. Jump on, jump on. Let's only have one person on the screen right now, please. Yeah, come on, guys. Let's uh, let's jump on. I'm sharing on mine. I hope you're sharing on yours. Those of you that are on social media, you know I can't have you touch your neighbor. Help a preacher out tonight. Tonight, I want you to tune in. God's got a word tonight. I want you to tune in. There's a way that we've got a minister that's going to be unique but it's going to be necessary. This is not a normal Wednesday. It's not a normal moment and it's not a normal crisis. People are hurting. People are confused. People are uh, in panic. P- people are, people are fearful. Uh, people are uncertain tonight. We've got to minister to that. So new life. I need you to be new life. I need you to be the city church tonight. That's not a name that we just throw around to be cute or throw around to be hip. No, I believe it's our assignment to minister to a generation in this city. And tonight, especially if you're watching our live in the city of Detroit, I need you to share it. I need you to share it. I need you to share it because it's going to be a great night. I'm I'm, I'm sharing mine even now. Jump on and share. That's right. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on in. That's right. You guys coming on in on, on, on Facebook. I just shared mine. See, I want you to come on in tonight. Everybody, everywhere, new life, anywhere. Tonight, we've got a minister very, very, very intentionally because this is a moment in time that's different. I I believe that the job of the church, the job of the pastor is to be more than a place to shout, run around. It's a place to receive both hope and help. And tonight, I've got a word for you that I need you to be be real focused. I need you to be attentive tonight. I need you to do it. I've spent my entire Wednesday just about uh, uh, either structuring out what we're doing next uh, in a a world that changes by notification, seems uh, every hour. But at the same time, I've spent the day visiting many of our uh, individuals that are connected to our church that are overcoming uh, battles in their health. And uh, I'm glad to report that everything connected to new life is overcoming. I need you tonight. New life, jump on, share. I want you to come on when you come in. I want you to speak. I want you to share. We've got some very important things that we've got to talk about. If any other time you needed to incline your ear to, to the word of the Lord, I promise you, this is that season that in this moment, this isn't the time to play. This isn't the time to take it, take for granted. Uh, pe- people are, are, are leaving, uh, and, and it's not even, you might not see them tomorrow. Truth is you, you, you might not see them later today. And, and today we've got to take authority, uh, over that reality. We've got to do that because tonight I cast the spirit of fear out of your heart, out of your mind, out of your head, out of your house. I, I cast it out of your house. You, you, you cannot live in fear. You got to take authority over this moment. And, and tonight I'm going to talk to you. There's some things we got to talk about. So I need you to jump on in new life on a Wednesday night. You know, I'm normally used to the, the, the I'm able to touch my neighbor. I'm able to uh, have fellowship period, praise and worship. But, but tonight things have shifted and I want to give you a lot of information in a little bit of time. So new life jump on tonight and when you jump on New Life, check in. Let me know you're safe. Let us know you're good. They're going to respond to you in the comments. And I want you to do the same uh, 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 for me. Father, tonight, we thank you for this time that you've gathered us together digitally. We thank you that even in this moment of, uh, of, of being uncomfortable, found in an unusual and uncertain place. Father, I thank you that uh, you've always given us a way for the cross to continue. So Father, even on tonight's live, somebody is watching who's lost a loved one. Somebody's life has been pierced with this pandemic. And Father, tonight I pray that in this moment, you release that peace that passeth understanding. Because if we honestly have never said it before, we really had a place 
but we don't understand. I, I pray, Father, that you would that you would put our spirits and our souls at peace to the place that we don't have to have all the answers because we still know that you're still the solution. Father, while so many people are hurting and healing, we pray tonight that you would release your healing virtue through the land. Father, your word declared that if your people called by your name would humble ourselves and pray, seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, you're going to hear from heaven and heal the land. So Father, tonight, we, we've, we've, we, we've bowed ourselves, we've bowed our lives, our homes have bowed, our families have bowed, systems are bowing. And, and, and Father, tonight we pray that, that you'd heal the land. I pray tonight that you would go through every hospital and supernaturally do what you do best. And we'll give your name the praise and glory, Father, and I decree and declare over every family that's watching, over every house that's represented, whatever city or state they're from, I pray even now tonight that, 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 that you would cover that house in your blood. I pray tonight that, um, that you would release your peace in that place and we'll give you praise. Now speak to us and through us. There are lives all over the internet tonight, Father. Somebody's listening to me pray and got the finger on the next option. I pray tonight just for a moment that you will, that you will, that you will settle us so that we may hear what the spirit is saying to the church in this hour. And we give you praise. Now, Father, I release your joy into the lives of the, your people who are hurting and devastated and damaged in this moment. I pray that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. And I pray that somehow, some way, I pray that they rise to the opportunity to see your glory in this in a different way. And we give you a praise. We give you praise that, um, that this plague is our miracle. We know that you're a good God even on a bad day. So the problem can't stop our praise. We'll give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray to where you are tonight, you're blessed. I, I want to I I give this to you because and I want you to listen to me tonight. And, and, and New Life, I want you to share. I need you to, matter of fact, every couple minutes, I want you to share. Pastor, why do you want me to do that? Because I need to talk about something that's separate from the pandemic. That If we're not careful, it will create another virus for our existence. And uh, today is a very important day uh, in our city. It's a very important day around the country. And uh, today, as we are, as we minister to so many throughout the years in our cities, making sure that our, 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 our church is both anointed and aware. It's, it's, it's my heart to present quality and accurate information to make sure that in this moment, we don't have to brace for fear because we can rest in information. See, sometimes a lot of people don't understand that, that you're not scared of what you're aware of that a lot of people have been asking, should we be watching the news? I can't turn on. And, and I don't want to say that you're right or you're wrong, whether you watch the news or not. I, I'd suggest that you should watch the news long enough to understand what you're battling. L long enough to understand what to do, what not to do. Um, however, I, I don't think that you should live by the news. You understand? That's not your news. And a lot of people don't understand that this battle is a different type of battle. And I want to talk about that tonight um, in, a, in a different kind of way. And I want you to tune in. I don't want you to get tuned out and miss half of uh, what God is saying. But I, I'm, I'm really in a moment now where, where as we're watching this take place, um, we must prepare ourselves. I think that the greatest form uh, of, of, of um, or the greatest church is an informed church. I, I believe that information gives us strength. Uh, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so even as we're in this moment, my prayer is that you receive information that allows you to understand how this moment affects different areas of your existence. And tonight I'm excited that um, uh, a woman of God who's absolutely amazing in my eyes, a new life. She's really been a godsend that's sent to us. She's one actually one of the partners of the city of Detroit. She's our district two manager. 
And uh, she does such an amazing work in the city. If you're anywhere in the area of District 2, you really need to know this lady. And I want you to share, New Life Share. I need you to hear me. Um, this is the season. Remember, plead the blood and follow the instructions. Stay in the house. So much of your harvest is going to be connected in this season to you obeying instructions that you think aren't even important. It's the stuff that you just, hey, I'm going to just obey. It. This is the wrong season to miss the instruction. I'm telling you, uh, as we have to minister digitally, digitally, that share button is your invitation. That's their access point. There's somebody that's sitting battling uh, what to believe in this moment. And uh, I need you to share. I need you to, I, I need you to do all of that because I want, I want Miss Kim Tandy to come on, uh, on the screen today. And I want you to get your Bible, get your family. I want you to get your Bible tonight uh, because tonight we're having the family Bible class. Maybe the miracle of this moment is he's bringing families back together again. Maybe that while the plague is happening on the other side of my front door, there is a miracle taking place in my house. And I decree over your life that God supernaturally changes the lens you see this through. And while you're in the house, while you're on the couch, while you're in the bed, while you're in the kitchen, I pray tonight that supernaturally God shows you the miracle of this moment, that while plagues are in the earth, I decree over the, matter of fact, you ought to comment that it's on the other side of my door. It's on the other side of my door, that everything in my house, everything connected to me is covered by my confession. It's, it's, it's on the other side of my door. But tonight, uh, there's something that is, that is going on uh, today in our country, and it, it, is, it, is, it is time for the, for the 2020 census. And uh, many of us don't understand. I, I had a conversation with an individual today, and they said, it's amazing to me how many people don't understand how much of an impact politics and government have on their existence. He, 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 he said, you got to understand that the material your clothes are made of is politics. Uh, the, the air that, 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 that we're breathing, many things that we do to be who we are has to do with the other layers that are not so interesting. These are like the vegetables of life. You know, it's like the stuff that ain't so pretty, ain't always so exciting. But in order to stay healthy, you're going to have to pay attention to what's going on. And I've completed my 2020 census. It took me about four minutes today. And New Life, Detroit, hear me. If you miss this moment, it's not on the news. It's not all over the news because we know today the news says, wake up, Corona, as is all day. It's just Corona, 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 which is why you cannot let that program your faith all day. You got to listen to understand and then you move on. OK, you got to listen to understand what you're fighting and then you move on. But you can't let that in your spirit all day, every day. Listen to understand. OK, listen to understand. All right. I want to get that to you. All right. So Kim Tandy is on the line. Miss Tandy, how are you doing? I'm good, Pastor. How are you this evening? I am amazing. Thank you for taking time to meet with me. You know, we're doing this whole digital thing, trying to make church authentic. But at the same time, uh, be aware of what's going on. We have to be forced into a world that many of us were not ready for. But I'm looking at you back there, wherever you are. Kim, Kim you done figured that thing out. You got the spirit <laughs> of the right behind you. What's yeah, going we've, on? we've had a lot of these calls. So we're trying to make sure that everybody is touched and has access to information. So we've been doing a lot of these. We've learned a lot about Zoom in the last wow. couple of weeks. <laughs> wow. So, so Kim, give me this real quick because I don't want to hold up your time. I know you're busy. I want, I want to ask you real quick. Just give us the description and everybody connected to New Life Anyway. Share, share, share. As we're listening to different uh, 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 funds and grants that will be coming in, it's moments like this that gets you in position to have access to the harvest of the next season. Are you understanding? which is why tonight I need you to share. I need you to be mature. I, the, you, it, we can't have no emotional church no more. Ain't, this is not the season where you can have emotional church. Ain't, ain't, it's no emotion involved in this. This is the season where the wheat and tear have grown together and now there's a separation, okay? So tonight, nobody can supervise your salvation in this season. You're gonna have to be mature enough to pay attention to what's happening prophetically in the earth so that you know where you fit 
in the future? Because Miss Tandy, I want you to tell us real quick, what what do you do in the city of Detroit? Um, I know you're the district two manager, but just tell us what that kind of means. So I'm I'm the district two manager. I am the eyes and ears for the mayor um, in in our district. And so what we do is deal with quality of life issues um, for the city of Detroit to make sure that the mayor knows and all of our departments know, and that people have hands on touchy feely that they can come to us and we can give information and do whatever it is to make sure that the quality of life for every resident in the city of Detroit is taken care of. So that, that could mean as little as making sure that your trash gets picked up to getting houses dem demolished, but also mm. right now in the, in the season that we're in right now is to make sure that all of our residents know and have updated accurate information about what is going on, where to go get help, um, and just to get that information. Uh, one of the big things today is that it is National Census Day. It is National Okay, wait, Census I, need every, I need everybody on this live. I need you to do it. Some of y'all are like, I'll never post stuff like that. I need you to do it right now. I need everybody to comment, today is a big day. 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 She's going to explain it. I want to, I'm going to show you how this even lines up prophetically with where we are in the earth. People who believe God have to look at this moment differently. And I'm going to teach you tonight, and I want you to stay focused, and I don't want you to mention it. I want somebody in the house to go to Ezekiel 37. I want somebody else to go in the house to go to Numbers 21. That's what I want you to do tonight. Want somebody go to Ezekiel 37. Somebody else go to Numbers 21. Y'all all in the house. I want you to call everybody. Come on, let's the family. Let's sit down. Let's sit down. Come on, come on, come on. Let's sit down. Let's study this word so we can figure out where our family fits in this future. All right. So today is a big day. Today is a big day. Why is today a big day? Because uh, it's National Census Day. So this is the day where we reference how many people have actually filled out our census. This is so important because this day and uh, the next couple of days. So it's not the last day to fill it out, but it, it is the day that we reference on where we are. And right now, Detroit is about 30 percent of of Detroiters have filled out their census. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, because we always ask God to release the favor. But but you're responsible for the follow through. God can favor you all day, but if you're not going to follow through, you mean to tell me that in the city of Detroit, 30 percent of Detroiters have completed this census. Yep. As of this morning, that's where we were. So we are really pushing to make sure that people fill out that paperwork. It's so important because this is what determines the funding that comes into our city for the next 10 years. Uh, -uh. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need you to comment that we got to turn this around. We got to turn this around. Wait a minute. So 30 percent of Detroiters have filled this census out. And you're telling me if we don't, the people, you, I'm not talking to your baby daddy, your baby mama, your mama, your dad. I'm talking to you. You that's sitting there. Lit. Do you hear the word? <laughs> I'm talking to you. Here, I want you to hear me. If you do not, you're going to do it after Bible class. If you, and even if you, no, I want you to do it after Bible class. I, Cause I want you to catch this. If, if you do not hang up this line and fill out this form, how does this affect us our business, our vision, and our children. How does this affect us, Kim, if we don't Well, it do affects it? us. This is the money. This affects the money that gives. Even in disaster times like this, this affects the money that we are getting um, from the federal government per resident that is in our city. So it's very important. It, it affects our roads. It affects all of those things. It affects our schools. This is the funding that we get. And mind hmm. you, this count is the count. For the next 10 years, there is no redo. We can't go back and say, oops, I forgot. Maybe some this people moved it. in. This number is the number. And today is the day that we reference what that number is. Now we have a, a, a little bit more time mm -hmm. and I don't want to give another end day because people will wait till the last minute. So right, let's use right. today as the last minute. But we do have a little bit more time and there will be people that will start to come and do door to door. The problem is, is that now during this pandemic, we don't have that same opportunity to go door to door and help some of those others that have not filled it in. The beauty of this year is that even before this happened, you can fill out your census online by going hmm. to my2020census.gov. Hold on, M I want you to say it. Uh, hold on, I want them to write that in the comments. Say it again. My, M-Y, 2020census. Dot gov. So my2020 C E N C U S 
dot gov. S I'm, I'm S U S. I'm sorry. C M Y two zero two zero C E N S U S dot gov. You can go online now. There's going to ask you when you hit there to put in a 12 digit code. If you did not receive a 12 digit code in the mail, it does mm -hmm. not matter. Underneath the login, you can still log in and fill out your census, even if you do not know that 12 digit code. So mm. don't, don't let that be your excuse. So let nothing can stop you. Nothing. It takes 10 minutes. It's 10 questions. And it determines what we will do for the rest of this for the next 10 years. Now, there's some people that are watching that say, man, I thought I was tuning in to Bible class, Pastor Weldon. I thought this was Bible study, and it is. We're going to study the word because it's important that we understand that God can release everything from heaven, but it don't mean nothing if you're not going to be in position in the earth. These moments, these things such as the, the senses that give us access to have a voice to change the things we yell about and complain about and post about and get upset about. What, what, what this does is give us the ability to get in position, new life. There, there are so many of you that are creative, that are visionaries. You've got to understand that you've got to move in the now to get in position for the next. We've got to be, be in position for what's coming next, okay? There's a harvest assigned to this, but you've got to be responsible in the natural uh, before God releases something in the supernatural. So, Kim, I mean, thank you so much uh, for taking this time tonight, and I know the city has you guys kind of crazy at this time. Uh, a little, but I'm it's honored. a little busy. It's yeah. a little busy, but let everybody know, too, that nobody else can look at this. It's a sealed document. It doesn't affect your insurance. People can't check on where you live and all that other. It's a sealed document. It is illegal for anybody to share it. So there's really no reason why we are not. It's one per household, one per address, but we really need those numbers to be filled out. And if you have any businesses on the phone, uh, on, the, on the call today, just want to let you know that there was a stimulus package just put out there. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's small businesses in the city of Detroit can go to degc.org. And there are there's some grant funding to help so we can make sure our businesses stay alive in the city as well. Say, say that say that site one more time. D-E-G-C dot org. Yeah. M Ms. Tandy, thank you so much. I pray thank God's blessing on me. you and your whole family. I, I love you and I appreciate this time love that you, you took thank to you. minister to us today. You, you know, it, it, I believe it's the job of the church in this time. And I want to get right into this word tonight. We're going to start at Exodus 3. I believe it's the job of the church in this time to provide hope and help. That's why if you're looking for information that's accurate on the do's and the don'ts, remember, uh, you ain't, uh, you're not scared if you're aware. I, I mean that, that's, that, that you've got to arm yourself with accurate information. Not everybody talking, but you got to get accurate information. So follow New Life Anywhere throughout the day. We're going to post uh, just different facts and things that come down through the we're, we're in a world that changes by notification every hour almost it seems like and um, uh, uh, tonight we want to make sure that you're armed and equipped with both power and truth this is the hour where the true worshipers must worship God in spirit and we got to walk in truth so I pray that God gives us that today all right, Exodus chapter three is where I want to pick up and I want to give this to you in just a few minutes because I want you to understand prophetically what's happening. And it's a moment that God has been talking to us about for quite some time. And I'm sure that there are people that might be watching uh, today. Uh, and I'm so honored that you that you tuned in to our live. But New Life, I want to speak particularly to your faith because in this moment, there are some things that God warned us about in details and he did it to punch us in the faith. You heard me say that he's punching us in the faith that we're living in a moment where God is creating problems so that our faith can see him fix it. 
I really want you to get what's happening in the earth because there's some of you, and I, I forgive me, some would say, man, preach something other than the pandemic and do something. This. And I understand. And, that, and there's so many great men and women of God that are preaching all over this internet, all over this world, and they're going to do what God called them to do. But I, but I really feel the weight of this moment in my spirit. I, I really feel the weight of 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 God's people. I, I'm 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 experiencing a a moment where for the last two days, I really had to sit uh, uh, here in my house and just pray and ask God, Lord, what is happening in this moment? Um, people are 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 looking to 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 everyone. They're looking to the news. They're looking to uh, the 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 church. The, the, and they're trying to figure out what uh, is going on tonight, and and I and I want to I want to kind of speak to that if 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 you'll if you'll just stick with me because new life I need you to hear this. Did you notice that movie theaters are now closing down? Not for the pandemic, they are now closing down. The Lord told us this before we got to this moment, which is why we've also been brought to a place where it's the word of God that's going to get you through. Oh, I want you to get this. It, it is, it is, it is the word of God um, that's going to pull you through in this moment. That that that, as the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation, Revelation, you gotta you gotta strengthen now what remains. And, and and in this moment, this is why you've got to be attentive to the word of God because when you pay attention to the word of God, seasons don't sneak up on you. When, 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 when you, when you really, when you really hide the word in your heart, a lot of times we, this moment really has humbled us and, and made us reevaluate a lot of things we took for granted. I prayed yesterday and in prayer, I heard the Lord say, this was not sent to destroy the kingdom. This came to humble. This, this is about humility. This, this isn't destruction. And I think that we've got to be real, real, realistic about the fact that where we are now, God has shaken us to a place of humility and brokenness, um, and, and and it's undeniable. So, so I want to, I want to, because I don't want to get, I don't want to stay there uh, uh, too long. But we're at a place that we're learning that people now cannot hide behind church. Um, you got to hold on to what you got. I need you to put that in the comments. Hold on to what you got. Uh, you can't hide behind the praise team. The truth of the matter is on Sunday, Darius James ministered in a powerful way, but, but you couldn't hide behind the sopranos, altos, and tenor. Either, either, either you got a relationship with God that strikes up a sound or, or you don't. And, and for so long, the weed and tear have grown together and we've been able to hide in church. With, with who's saved and who ain't saved, you know, well, I believe God. And what we're learning is a lot of people in church don't believe God. It's like that woman with the issue of blood for 12 years, she's bleeding. She goes to the doctor, but they can't help her because it's not physical. She go to the, to the, to the bank, but they can't help her because it's not financial. We know she got money because she's been bleeding on a menstrual cycle for 12 years. By law, when you're on a cycle, you're not supposed to be in general vicinity of other people. So then the question becomes, how do you know she got money? Because how else are you paying for medical expenses out of pocket for 12 years? The Bible says that this woman for 12 years has this issue of blood. And after she's taken her issue to the doctor, then she took the issue to the bank and it wasn't financial. And then after she took it everywhere else, then she come bringing the issue to church. Isn't it amazing that, that sometimes God is the last place we go? Sometimes we go to God last. We go to God after we've tried everybody else. It's 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 like I, I don't want you to take so long to get to him, but it don't matter when you get there. He's always sitting there waiting for you. And the Bible says this woman for twelve years finally decides I'm I'm a I'm gonna take my issue to church. I'm gonna take my issue to God, and 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 the doctor can't help me. The bank can't help me, uh, and so I'm gonna take my I'm gonna take my issue to God. So she gets in church and she sits in the church with her issue, and she and she gets to church, and, and when she hears the word. The word, the word from the preacher is powerful. It's simple. It's not, it's not long, which is why even in this new normal, it's, it's making us pivot that, that the word of God don't have to be long to be strong. And so 
he speaks in the word. Now she's been back there with this issue for the last 12 years. She don't went to the doctors. She don't went to the, uh, to the bank. And now she finally comes to church. And when she gets to church, look what the Bible says. The Bible says the preacher gets up. And when she comes to the church with her issue, the preacher preaches a sermon. And when he speaks to her, he says, daughter, thy faith hath made you whole. Wait a minute. It's been 12 years. I've been bleeding with this same issue. I done took this issue everywhere and nobody can fix this issue because what most of us do not understand is that until you say yes to God, there will always be an issue. You will always bleed in a private place that you really can't put your finger on. And, and the Bible says, like so many of us, she takes this issue to doctors, hoping that they can medi medicate it. And so many of us are underestimating the fact that we've got to pray against coping mechanisms that the enemy will offer us to medicate our issues right now, to medicate what's hurting us. And the Bible says that she, she then you know, uh, is, 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 realizes, he says, daughter, that faith have made you whole. Wait a minute. So why is it that I went to the doctor and they couldn't help me because it wasn't physical? I went to the bank and they couldn't help me because it wasn't financial. For the last 12 years of your life, your issue has never really been your issue. Your issue has been your faith. But look at what's happening now. I want you to pay close attention to this. Share, 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 especially if you're being blessed. I want you to share. The challenge becomes when she heard the word, the preacher did not preach to her issue. When she heard the sermon, the sermon in no way brought up her issue. The sermon immediately spoke to her faith. What this moment proves is that in many cases, we have shifted what we're doing in the body of Christ, where now when we come to church, all we're hearing is we're now preaching to issues. And people love when you preach to their issues because when you preach to their issues, they'll shout. When you preach to their issues, they'll follow you. When, they, when you preach to their issues, they'll, they'll give, man. When you preach to their issues, they will run around. When you preach to their issues, they will repost you. They will, they will, they, they'll post whatever style. When, when you preach to their issues, they love that because they now get to pick their own teacher according to their own lust when you preach to their issue. But, but the issue becomes, we're now at a moment that we're realizing that we've got a church that's bleeding because there are a lot of people in church that even though they're shouting, the real issue is that they have no faith. He said, daughter, your issue ain't your issue. Your issue this entire time has been your faith. And I know that everyone has a different assignment. Everyone has a different approach. Everyone's trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. But, but where my heart is convicted in this moment is, is all I can preach is what he said. We've got we to gotta hold on to our faith. So go to Exodus chapter three. I'm going to do this quickly and I'm going to let you go tonight. I pray that tonight you're receiving this. I, I want a title and maybe I got to figure out a way. God's given me a unique way to do some things in this upcoming Sunday. Uh, is going to be baptism, baby dedication, and communion. And I'm going to tell you how you uh, can be a part of it. Pastor Weldon, how is that going to happen? I'm going to tell you one thing. It's going to be a moment in time that uh, I wish I could jump in, the, in, in, in it and do it and just baptize myself. But you need at least one other person to be a part of it, and we prefer that you have two and uh, all to be a part of it. Uh, I'm going to give you some information at the end. This weekend we're preparing, and the way God's been leading me is, is I think the way I've settled is that I'll be teaching this faith in a famine. Faith in a famine. I've got to preach to your faith now. I've got to teach to your faith right now. I can't ignore the realities that there are people who are watching me who are listening and mad at this moment. There's some of you that are watching this live and upset with how some stuff went down. There's, there's some people watching me that if, and, and you like, listen, 
if, if something is not said in this moment that 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 changes the way I see this, I don't know how to make it. I can't preach around the famine. I got to preach to it. I can't preach around what's 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 over overtaking so many people's hearts. I got to preach directly to it. This ain't a subliminal season. You understand? I got to speak directly to what's happening. And, and so on Sundays, I'm going to follow what happened with Isaac. I mean, the Lord says, this is the moment of Isaac, that what he's doing in this moment is he's blessing the family. I need you to take a moment right there and comment your family, comment your family, comment your family, comment your family. I'm trying not to yell and sweat so much because it's hot in here. I like this little thing, but I got to find some ventilation because I sweat for thinking, but we're going to figure it out. I need you to comment it right there. Come on, come on, jump in there. I need you to comment it. Whatever your family name is, I want you to comment their name. I want you to comment their name. I want you to comment their name. And tonight, you're going to put a seed in the ground tonight. You're going to sow tonight. I don't care how you feel. I don't care how it look. You're going to sow tonight. You're going to put a seed in the ground tonight because the future is secure. Are you hearing me? I, I need you to get this in your faith today. All right? So what God is doing is he creates problems for my faith. I need everybody to declare he did it for my faith. All right, so 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 let me give you a text. I'm going to give you a text, and then I'm going to come up. I kind of like teaching like this because I can do it my way. Go to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4. So we'll teach about Isaac on Sunday. This weekend, I want you to join us. I'll be talking, Lord, show me where to dig. This is a season where you have you must realize that God has made the earth pause. He's made the world pause so that before the next shift, the kingdom has a window to advance. How are we going to advance? He's giving us an opportunity to put stake in the next world. We're putting our stake in the future. We're digging the wells that will feed our families forever. I want you to receive this in the spirit. I want you to get this tonight. Exodus 4, Exodus 4, and we're going to chase some scriptures. This is Bible class. It's not, we, we're not running around tonight. It's a different kind of day. New life, you're going to stick in there. Share, share, share. Stick in there now. And I want you to comment. I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so proud of you, man. I'm telling you, I got the best church on this on this screen. I got the best church on this screen. Ain't no, ain't no church on this screen better than y'all. Exodus chapter 4, look at verse number 5. I want you to get this. Wake up. Punch anybody in that room that's asleep. If they distracted, punch them. If, I'm, I'm telling you right now, don't no video games, get off FaceTime, take notes, take notes tonight, okay, so that so that if your faith has a bad day, you got something to hold on to. Take notes tonight. Don't take this for granted. Exodus chapter four, verse number five. Exodus four, verse number five. I want to read that. Exodus four, verse number five. And I'm not going to read the whole verse because this is what the Lord has been yelling in my spirit in this moment. In, and again, the word of the Lord is sure. Okay? The word of the Lord is sure. A few weeks ago, we're in the middle of worship, and I hear the Lord yell, by June. Tell my people, by June. I don't know what it means. I, I Hey, people have been saying, Pastor, what does that mean? I guess it means whatever happens is it's got to be done by June. Having no idea that this pandemic was on the way, but that's the only thing my faith can hold on to. I I, I heard him say by June, I'd be doggone if I didn't look up the other day and all over the internet, they're releasing that. We're going to go ahead and be honest. It looks like this quarantine is going or this order is going to last a little longer. By the way, in the state of Michigan, our governor signed an extension today. Uh, uh, and, and now uh, governments are saying by June 1st. I need somebody to comment. The word of the Lord is sure. I need you to get that. I, I, need you to, I need you to get that. Pastor, why are you saying, no, no, no. I need you to get that the word of the Lord never fails. It never fails. My hope has to hold on to what I heard. Faith comes by hearing. Your faith comes by what you hear. In moments where your hope is, is, is you're in a battle. That's where so many of us are in this moment, and that's where we're missing. The enemy's trying to rob us of our hope. If you, if, if you lose your hope, that's what's terminal. Life without hope is terminal. What I need you to understand is, is that you've got to hold on to what you heard. I heard by June. That's what I heard the Lord say. And he ain't lied to me yet. He ain't lied to me about a building. He ain't lied to me about a relationship. He ain't lied to me about a, he ain't lied to me about the doors. He ain't lied to me yet. I need you to declare the word of the Lord is sure. All right. Exodus 4, 
and and and, and I'm almost finished because I'm really just gonna read this. Uh, the next couple of weeks, I'm working on something called Story Time with PW. It's gonna be uh, my opportunity to tell Bible stories in a more relaxed fashion, but I promise we'll walk from the beginning to the end. Exodus chapter four, verse number five. Look at this. I promise you guys, I heard the Lord yell this in my spirit today and yesterday. Verse number five, that they may believe. I sat and I, God, why are we going through this? Why is this happening? That they may believe. Exodus chapter three starts with Moses being called by God to this bush on fire. Pay close attention because I need you to get this. Go to Exodus chapter three, go to Exodus chapter three, and, and, and I'm, and I'm going to give you this because there is a scripture that I want you to hold on to in your faith for the next, for this season, for the rest of your life, really. What God is doing in this season is really giving your faith evidence for the rest of your life. Whatever God does for you in this moment, don't you ever forget he did it. Exodus 3, what God does, he calls Moses up to this, this bush on fire and says, hey, listen, I, I, I've, I've heard my people's cry. Pay attention. On Wednesdays, we'll follow the children of Israel through this famine. On Sunday, we'll follow Isaac. But I need the children of Israel. I need you to understand how this affects us as kingdom people. This is the perspective new life of kingdom people, how believers must view this moment. I want you to get this. He tells Moses, man, listen, I'm sick of, I'm sick of Egypt making slaves out of my son. So what I need to do is I need to go down and overthrow their systems. And I need to overthrow every system that makes a slave out of my people. Moses said, all right, well, how are you going to do that? He said, well, simple. The way I'm going to do it is uh, I'm going to stretch out my hand. Exodus chapter three, uh, look at verse 19. Moses says, okay, so you are tired of the world holding that the pressure, the, 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 the treatment of how the world handles your sons and your daughters. He said, yeah, I'm sick of it. He says, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm getting ready to go down through Egypt. Okay, and, and I'm and I'm gonna stretch out my hands with my plagues. Now, here's what's crazy in Exodus chapter three, verse number 19. Look what he says. Pay close attention. I told one of y'all to get Exodus three. Now I'm gonna tell you again. One of y'all get Exodus three. One of y'all should have read Exodus four and somebody else should have been at Ezekiel 37. And then we're going to go to go to Numbers chapter 21. Now, make sure if you're in the room, you got to be in the word now, because this is something we don't have time to play with our faith and we don't have time to be mixed up on what the word is saying. So I want you to play, pay close attention because look at it. God says to Moses in Exodus chapter three, this is what I need for you to do. I've heard the cries of my people. I am overthrowing the world's system, not the kingdom's system. I'm giving you a recap so you can catch up to where we are. He says to Moses, watch this. I need you to share. Look at what he says. He says, Moses, I'm going to overthrow every system system that's strangling you, every system that's stressing you. I'm going to overthrow every system that's making a slave out of my sons. He says, okay, mm, well, what that got to do with me? He said, this is what I need you to do. I need you to go down to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Look at verse number 19. He said, but I know that he won't let you go unless it's under my compulsion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch out my hand and maneuver his movements. Now, don't miss this. The heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it whatsoever way he chooses. You got to understand that you serve the God that can give you favor with all men. I want you to hear me when I tell you that what God does is he takes a man's heart and he twists it in whichever way pleases his will at the time. So many times they weren't even mad at you. God just turned their heart in a different direction. And as a matter of fact, I release over this line that while you are on this line, there are some of you that have petitions and some of you that have things that you're believing God for and you asking God for supernatural intervention. I decree and declare over your life. I promise I pray you receive this, that God is turning somebody's heart in your favor, even in this moment. I want to stay on time so I can let you go. Look at what happens. God says to Moses, go down to Egypt, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. 
But then look at how, how petty God seems. Look at what he does. He then beats Moses to Pharaoh and then says to Moses or says to Pharaoh, when he get here, don't let him go. Look at what the Bible says. He tells Moses, go down to Pharaoh. Tell him, let my people go. And the Bible says what God did was he hardened Pharaoh's heart. Why would you harden Pharaoh's heart? Because had he not hardened Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh may have released the children of Israel from bondage and captivity without a fight. He may have released them too soon. And faith ain't faith until it's been through something. Man, let me tell you something about the different viewpoint that's happening in this moment right now. See, there's some people right now that this is your first storm, this is your first trial, but there are a few people on this line that can decree it. I need you to comment it right now that, that, that my faith been through something. I need you to comment that. That faith ain't faith until it's been through something. So look at what God does. He tells Moses, go down, tell Pharaoh, I said, let my people go. He then beats Moses to Pharaoh and says, hey, when he get here, don't let him go. Okay. He tells Moses, go down to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh, share this. Don't just sit there and shake your head at me. Share it. You ought to be reposting or something. He says, I need you to go down, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. But then he beats Moses to Pharaoh and says, hey, when he get here, don't let him go. Why? Because look at in verse 20, in order for me to get my glory, I got to let him see my hand. Wait a minute. Uh oh, I want you to see this. See, what's happening in the earth right now is God is really showing his hand. Now, here's what's happening. He says to Moses, he says to Moses, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all my miracles. Now, wait a minute. They said it was a plague. No, it's a plague for Egypt. It's a miracle for the kingdom. I need everybody in, on this line. Whether you know somebody that's affected, infected, you standing in the gap for people that are on the front line. I'm praying that God helps the helpers and that God ministers to the ministers. I need you to declare it right now in the comments. This is not our plague. This is not our plague. This plague did not come to destroy the kingdom. This plague has come to humble. I want you to receive this. I need you to declare that. This is not our plague. I decree and declare that the saints shall not die. The saints are not supposed to die from this. I decree and declare that faith and hope shall be your portion. And this week, I stand in faith that your testimony shall be it turned around, that it's turning for my faith favor. I feel myself getting back to myself. I need you to comment it. I need you to comment it for somebody. I don't care what it look like. I don't care what they said. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care who else is around. I decree over your life, even right now, that if there's breath in you, there is life in you. I need you to speak on somebody's behalf who doesn't know how to reconcile what's going on in their heart right now and declare, this is not our plague. They shall live and not die. I believe God that this is not our plan. I want you to get it because I want to get out of here. Oh, man, it's 751. I said I'm going to be done at eight. So look what he said. He says, go down, tell, Mo tell Pharaoh, let my people go. And then he beats, Mo beats Moses to Pharaoh and says, hey, when he get there, don't let him go. Why? Because sometimes I want you to write this down and never forget this. You got to remember this. Sometimes God will allow a problem. Sometimes he will create a problem so my faith can see him fix it. He said, no, 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 no. I got to harden his heart because if I don't, Israel might get out of there without a fight. And if I let them get out of there without a fight, they're going to think they got out of there because of them. They're going to think they got out of there because because Pharaoh was a nice man. He said, no, no, no. I can't do it if I can't get my glory. So how am I going to get my glory? He said, I'm going to make Pharaoh stubborn. I want you to receive this. He says, so I'm going to set out a place. And then Moses said, well, what you going to do? He says, what I'm going to do is look at it. I need you to go to Exodus 3. Look at verse number 21. Look at verse number 21 of Exodus 3. Verse 21. I want you to get it. And then I'm almost finished. And I will grant this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. God is about to give you 
about to make the world give you money that you didn't have, could not afford, I need you to declare everybody that's really standing on the word of God. I want you to hear what I'm declaring tonight. I need you to declare there's a miracle in this for me. I want you to re- wait, 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 wait. I want you to, that's it. Comment it, share it. When you comment, hit a, hit a, hit a heart, share, do something, do something, do something, do something, do something. I need you to comment that there's a miracle in this for me. Well, where's the miracle? Look at it. Verse number 21 of Exodus chapter three, because I, I need you to pay attention. I got to get out of here, but I need you to pay attention. He says, I'm going to give them favor in the sight of the Egyptian. God's going to make the world help you right now, but you got to last through this on the other side of this. God's got a harvest assigned to your hands on the other side of this, but you got to stay in the house. You got to obey the instructions. You got to follow instruction. You have to obey your way through this season. I need you to hear me. You got to obey your way through this season. Look at what it says. Verse number 21. And it shall be when you go. I promise you, I heard this in my spirit and I need your faith to hold on to this. He says, you will not go empty handed. I need you to receive where you are. I know it hurts. I know it's aggravating. I know it's frustrating. I know it's disappointing. Some of you are deflated. Some of you are angry, but I decree over your life. I need you to hold on to Exodus chapter three, verse number 24, that God's not going to make me live through this and not give me nothing to show for it. I need you to declare, I will not leave empty handed. I done cried too much. I done been in too many. uh, I I done sprayed Lysol all all over my house. I ain't seen my baby in three days. We all separated and fragmented. I can't go to my church. I can't go to the movie. I can't get out the house. I need you to declare, I'm not leaving this empty handed. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. I got to keep going. So what happens? Look at what happened. Look at what happened. What's going on right now? Pastor Wellen, you saying, you're saying that this is not for the kingdom, but there are people in the kingdom who are unfortunately being taken from us. Church, this is not about righteousness or unrighteousness, white or black, rich or poor, gay or straight. This wickedness. That's what this is. I need you to declare it. I need you to put it in the comments. I need you, hear me. I need you to use your authority and put it in the comments that this is wickedness. This is wickedness. This is wickedness. I spoke to a great woman of God who lost someone in her family yes, the other day, and she called me and said, I need to know, is God evil like this? I need to know, am I crazy for not being mad at God? And I had to make them repeat how how did your so-and-so die? Well, they died this way. Well, how did they do this? Well, they did it this way. Well, pastor, why would you have her do that? I told her there's so much weight on you in this moment. You don't have any room for the devil to deceive you. You ain't got no room for manipulation. You've got to declare what it is. You've got to understand how to face the, I, you understand what I'm telling you? Okay. So here it is. You saying, pastor, that this is not for the saints. You're saying, you're saying that 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 this is not for the saints. Well, so what are we supposed to do? And I told her, you cannot leave this mad at God. You, you, you cannot, I, I believe, and one thing I'm starting in this season is quarantine conversations with PW. I'm having conversations that you really just can't have conversations that people may not be ready to have. Like why I kind of sometimes battle with whether or not I believe that a man can say he's an intercessor. I believe that that there's a a different authority that comes with certain offices. And I'll show you that tonight, but I wrestle sometimes with whether or not a man can be an intercessor. However, I do believe in the, in the, in the, in the gift of intercession. OK, I, I, we're going to talk about these things, but 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 in the next couple of days, we, we're going to bring this up that that here's the thing. One of the things we have to be real about is that we as the church have to prepare God's people for how to face moments of grief and disappointment. You don't get to quit on God just because he didn't do what you wanted him to do. That's not prayer. That's selfishness. It's manipulation. There are some people that feel like if God answered your prayer, they would have got up. If God answered your prayer, big mama wouldn't have died. It's been years and you've battled that. But many people don't understand that sometimes death is ultimate healing. I need you to understand that God answers prayer, but he does not always answer them your way. So hear me when I give this to you. So now we're in a moment that even though this is wickedness, we've got to make sure that we are not programming God's people to blame God. 
No, you can't blame God in this. No, in all of this, Job did not sin and he did not blame God. It is hard. I believe it's hard. It's heavy. I feel the weight. There's some of you that are mad, but you got to get your faith to a place where you can get enough hope to declare that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But God is still a good God on a bad day. Hear me. I need you to write this down and I got to stop. I got three minutes and I got to stop. We now have to take spiritual authority over a natural disaster. This is wickedness. It's wickedness. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Ezekiel 37. I, I've been watching the news, and again, you get enough news to be informed. You don't let the news program you. Hear me when I give you this. And they are suggesting, hear me, that in the next couple of weeks, that because of COVID-19, they are suggesting, I need, you, I, I need you to watch this, that we are estimating 100,000 to almost 240,000 deaths in the U.S. because of this sickness. There's another number out there in the way, and there's so many numbers uh, out there, but I saw another number that says uh, in the long run, they, they, they project 2 million deaths. Hear me, look at me. I need you to hear me because there's some of you that's battling for your health, battling for your faith. Here's the thing, okay? Guard your gates, guard your gates. Guard your gates, guard your gates, guard your gates. You don't understand how illegal conversations weigh on your spirit. You don't understand how illegal information weigh on your spirit. You don't understand how much you've been affected because you've ruined God connections because you heard in information that was illegal that should have never come to you. I need you to learn that in order to get through this season of your life, you got to guard your gates. You got to guard your gates. Faith comes by hearing my ear gates. So, so if I'm not careful, whatever I hear the most is what I'll develop faith in. I need you to get this, okay? I need you to get this. When you watch them saying, we're expecting 100,000 or 240,000 people to die and projecting 200 million, what you are allowing, watch this, is you're allowing them to put that wickedness in your atmosphere. I, don't hang up. I'm almost there and I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. I promise I'm gonna stop. Look at what he says. He says, Ezekiel 37. He says, prophesy. Look at verse number eight. He says, go prophesy to the bone. Ezekiel said, well, here's the thing. I prophesy. I pray. He says, Ezekiel, I want you to go to this valley, prophesy to these bones. Now, Ezekiel got frustrated because he'd been praying. He'd been prophesying. But look at what happened. He said, I'm looking at it. It's in verse number eight. He says, the flesh grew, the skin covered, but they never got up. It's no breath in them. He said, they're not breathing for themselves. They're on a ventilator. They're on life support. He said, God, I've been praying. I've been prophesying, but, but, but they can't breathe for themselves. Then he said, well, here's what you do. When the body don't respond, take authority over the wind. I need you to receive this tonight. He says, take authority since the body. See, if your children won't stop going to the club, you got to get enough faith in God that you say, okay, since my kids won't listen to me, I'm going to talk to the club and say, well, since my kids won't stay out the club, I command the wind to shut this sucker down because I've got authority over my wind. I need you to declare this. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to come back. All right, here we go. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. He says, he says, here's what you got to do. He says, you got to take authority over the wind. Hey, 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 this natural disaster is spiritual for the saint. I believe, and I can't let this go. I can't let this go. There are too many of the saints laying in the hospital, and I, I just can't let this, I can't believe that God is about to let this go like this. I believe by faith that hope will heal. I believe that faith will call us back to life, that in this moment, you've got to put everything that you got into believing this word, that the just shall live by 
faith. I need you to comment somebody's name that you're praying for. I need you to do it right there and command it. I command you to live. I command you to live. So watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I have authority over my win. You ain't going to be in my win telling me this about to happen. That's about to speak in negativity in my win. Be careful what music you went to, you listen to, because music infects your win. What you watch on TV, it infects your wind. And what that does is it releases wickedness into the wind. So, Pastor, what are we supposed to do as believers? You ain't supposed to get up on the internet just reposting what they said. You're a believer. You're a prophet of God. You believe in this word. So whenever they put something in the wind that don't line up with what you believe God to do, all of the prophets can't just repost what they said. You got to get up and go out there and say something else and rebuke that word out of the wind that I do not receive that over the next couple of weeks, hundreds of thousands, I believe that there is a miracle in the making. I need you to rebuke what's in your wind that don't line up with what's in your word. Last scripture. And I got to get this to you. If you can help it, I don't want you to tune out. I don't want you to get distracted. I want you to pay close attention. I was doing good. I wasn't sweating. I wasn't doing none of that. I wasn't yelling. Let me come down and I keep sweating. Let me come down. Let me come down. Come down and keep sweating. You got mood lights. You got, you got colors and stuff behind you. Come down. Ooh. Tonight's lesson is called Look Up. It's called Look Up. Numbers 21. Children of Israel are on, in transit on their journey. Don't miss this. They're, they're in the middle of this the shaking. They're in the middle of this awakening. Numbers chapter 20, verse 21, verse number four. Look at this. I want you to catch this because I want you to understand that even though this affected us in the natural, today while in prayer, the Lord told me to tell you, you have to respond in the spirit. I need somebody else on your phone. I need somebody else in the house. And I'm almost finished. I promise you. I need somebody else in the house to Google, just Google the Blue Cross Blue Shield logo. I want you to pay attention because I want you to be a part of baptism. Some of you are like, Pastor, how are we going to do that? Man, it's going to be something that's going to change your life. It's going to change your family. Those of you that want to be baptized, know somebody want to be baptized. Are you like, man, I want to just check on where I want to make sure I just rededicate my life to the Lord. I'm going to tell you how we're going to do baptism. Baby, I'm going to bless these babies. Y'all know I love these babies more than they pay. I love these babies. I got to pray on Sunday over the family. And then on Sunday, the whole family is going to have communion. You can't get off the line because you got to pay close attention to this. But somebody, I need you to Google and I need you to pull up the image of the Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, logo because I want you to see something. That, that, that Watch this. So Exodus chapter 3, God tells Moses this was about to happen. Exodus chapter 4, verse number 1, God tells Moses, I want you to take out that, that staff, that stick that's over there, and I need you to throw it on the ground. Because Moses said, okay, you're going to send me to get them. What you going to give me to get uh, get them out with. I need a weapon. I need some kind of protection. I ain't got no army. He said, you don't need an army. Take that stick, throw it on the ground. And when you throw the stick on the ground, it's going to become a snake. Well, when Moses threw the stick on the ground, it became this serpent. And then God says, you can't be no leader and be no punk. So before I send you to rescue my people, let me see if you flinch at snakes. Because you cannot lead if you're scared of snakes. Because in leadership, most people who are snakes at one point were your staff. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says that Moses throws his staff on the ground and the staff became a snake. The truth of the matter is if you ask most leaders, if you ever ask them who bit them, they'll tell you that the snake that bit them at one point was their staff. So look, he said, he said, I can't make you no leader if you no punk. So number one, the first test is I need you to paralyze fear. Throw the snake down. He picks the snake up by the tail. Why does he pick the snake up by the tail? Because anybody that knows about snakes, you know that when you pick them up by the tail, the snake is paralyzed. So before God calls you into the future, before God calls you into your purpose, he has to make sure you're not scared of what it's going to put you through. So he says in, in chapter four of Exodus, I want to make sure you ain't scared of snakes. Why? Do I have to make sure I'm not scared of snakes? But he speaks to me in my now moment for my next moment. Watch this. How am I? Why am I not scared of snakes? It's right there in Numbers chapter 21. Because in Numbers chapter 21, the Bible says, verse number four, that they traveled from Mount Or by way of the sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people wanted to give up because of the journey. They sick of this. Just let us outside. I, I heard that God doing something, but I just want to go out. I want to see people. Have you? <laughs> I want to see somebody. I want to I shake somebody's hand. I want to hug somebody, but I don't want to hug anybody 
Uh, I don't want to hug nobody as much as I want to hug everybody. I'm gonna be straight up with y'all. I know that y'all are super safe, but but ha, ha, anybody anybody else just ready to come out town? I want somebody. Watch it. This is about to be crazy because it's the middle of a church service, but it's a cyber service. So I need you to comment something you can't wait to do outside. I I, I just want to go outside, walk to the sidewalk, and come on back. They got, they got tired of the journey. And look at verse number five. And it, so then many times, write this down, when people get frustrated, they blame leadership. This is the season you have to pray for your leader because leaders are molded in a crisis. Greatness is not born, it's backed into a corner. Your leadership uh, is backed into a corner. There is no right thing to do. There are so many pastors that are reaching out to me that are saying, Pastor, how we do this, how we do that? Because this is a moment that whenever the people are frustrated, they get mad at the leader. They get mad at the leader for where, they're, where they are in their relationship with God. One of the worst things about being a leader is when everything goes right, you get none of the credit, but when everything goes wrong, you get all the blame. That, that, that's just how it goes. When, 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 when you're a leader, when you're the leader, the truth of the matter is when, when, when we win in, God get all the glory. When we lose in, pastor must not be praying. So they're in this spot where now the people are grumbling against Moses. Now it's the people that's grumbling against him that wasn't listening to him in the first place. We ain't going to talk about that because so many people are mad because they're living through words that have been spoken, but they didn't hear it because they weren't listening. So now that they're faced with the experience, they don't know how to recognize it because they weren't paying attention when God spoke it, right? So look what happened. So now they start grumbling against Moses. I promise you I'm going to let this go, but I got to give this to you because I want to get this. He says, uh, then they say, why you done brought us out of Egypt? And then you done brought us out of Egypt to give us this nasty food in this desert. How are you homeless and picky? Humility. God puts you in this wilderness to humble you. You are too stuck up to be that broke. There are some of you so single because you can't live up to your own standards. You just single. You just fine and alone. He better have a car and you Ubering. Humble myself. Okay, let me finish this. Let me finish. Let me finish. So watch this. Watch this. So let, look at verse number six. I need you to watch this. I need you to look, watch this verse number six of Numbers 21. And I'm done in two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Then the Lord sent snakes with a bite of poison. And the people got bit. And many of the Israelites, they, they died. In this moment, this ain't the time to play no April Fool's joke. This ain't the time for you to joke about Corona. There are some great people who have died. And there's some great families and some great people who are hurting. And Israel saw other Israelites start dying and they start saying, no, what's going on? How we die? And look at what happens in verse number, in verse number, right there, in verse number seven, they said, we sorry. The Bible said they saw all of the people that died and then they started repenting and said, we sorry, we done talked against you. We sorry that we done repented against the Lord. They done came and they done got scared. And what's scaring them is the fact that they seeing people die. What's scaring them is they seeing who dying. So now they scared and they fearful, fearful. and they're the believers and they're, they're, they're the Israelites and they're God's people. And and in the midst of all of that panic, and in the midst of all of that pandemic, look at what happened in verse number eight. And I'm finished. Then the Lord said to Moses, remember that trick I taught you in Exodus 4? What I told you then was for what you're tested with right now. He said, hey, Mo, remember that snake? In Exodus 4, remember the snake trick we did? Remember that snake thing, Mo? He said, yeah, I remember the snake thing. He said, it's time for the snake thing. Look what he says. Look at it. It's right there in verse 8. He said to Moses, make a speck, take a snake. Watch this. I, I, want you to, I want you to go pick up a long piece of wood. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. Um, while everybody panicking, while everybody is, is nervous, everybody's uneasy, he said, tell my people, this is spiritual. Look what he says. He says, tell them, go get a piece of wood. 
He says, Moses, go get a piece of wood, and I want you to wrap a snake. I hope you're looking at that Blue Cross Blue Shield logo. I hope you are. Wrap a snake around a piece of wood. Well, why, why, why am I wrapping a snake uh, around a piece of wood? Look at this. I, I hope you don't miss this. You can't miss this. And tell all my people, if they look up at the snake, they will be heal in other words i need you to comment this if you can look up you can get up man this is some good stuff only thing about facebook live is i don't know if it's as good to y'all as it is to me i don't know if y'all shouting but i'm sure shouting off of this one this is a word tonight because because there's some people that are down but but what we got to make sure they know is that you can still get up. I, I don't care how bad it looks. I don't care what the doctors say. I decree and declare that if there's time and breath in their body, I decree and declare that they can still get up. But in order to get up, they've got to look up. You cannot make it through this unless you keep hope alive. Look at this. So Moses, I mean, verse number nine, made a brass snake. Put this snake on a long piece of wood. Say, hey, if any of you have been bitten by corona, if any of you have been bitten by sickness, if any of you have been bitten by pneumonia, if any of you have been bitten by domestic violence, if, you're, if any of you have been bitten by unemployment, if any of you have been bitten by eviction, this is the word of the Lord tonight. I need you to get this. If you can just look to the hills, hear me, hear me. I need you to look up. I need you to look up. Why? Because look at what Jesus does in the New Testament. Jesus does in the New Testament a more clearer depiction of what they were trying to do in the Old Testament. What do you mean? In the Old Testament, it was a snake on the wood that healed you. What Jesus did in the New Testament, in the New Testament and said, Jesus decided to take the wood from the snake and show you how healing really take place. That in this moment of your life, you ain't got to look for the snake to heal you. But I know a man that's got another stick of wood. Oh, man. I wish I had my baby to hit the bump. <laughs> I need you to get it. If they can look up, they can get up. So again, Pastor, why did this happen? What's going on? It's Exodus chapter four, verse number five. That they may believe. When you believe God, you're not just believing God for your miracle. When you believe God, you're too scared of him to play with him. Grandmama used to always say, get somewhere and sit down. The Lord is at work. Whenever it storm outside, grandma said, get somewhere and sit down. The Lord is doing his work. Go somewhere. Rest, hide. Don't play outside tonight because God's doing his work. And what I want to tell you tonight on this call is that we're in a moment in time that we just got to wait it out. This is when one of those songs come in. Lord, we say, Lord, help me to hold out until my change come. You know, so so in this moment of your of your life, and I pray that you receive this. And Father, I pray even now that for every individual that is watching me tonight, I pray tonight while their faith is under fire. I pray tonight that you help us understand that this is not our play. We got to take authority over this attack. We got to take authority over our win. We got to we 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 got to find ourselves obeying the simplest instruction and we give you praise for the glory that shall yet be revealed father many of your people are lying in hospital rooms tonight hearts are hurting homes are hurting families are frustrated please sir touch we know you're able. Release your healing virtue through the land. I pray tonight 
for the Sheard family. I pray tonight for Mother Willie Mae Sheard, Elder Ethan. I, I speak that this sickness is not unto death. Not just for them, but Father, let there be a great resurrection. Let there, as you did in Ezekiel 37, I thank you now that even the people that so many doctors are saying it looks dismal, it looks dark. I pray that a great revival, a great army rises from this moment. And we will give your name the praise in Jesus' name forever. Amen. I want you to just clap. I, okay, you can't clap. Heart like don't get distracted and jump, don't jump off the live you will sow today I'm, I'm speaking to every person whose faith has a clear perspective don't jump off this live now this is the moment for stewardship you got to stop asking god for stuff you ain't willing to earn on sunday i'm going to talk about this season of isaac you got to ask god to show you where to dig it's going to be dirty business, but you, 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 there's a place for you in the future, and I don't want you to miss it, because this Sunday, there's some, they, they just hit me and said, Pastor, just a few people that's set up to be baptized, what are we going to tell them? I didn't know how to say, with everything else shutting down, the cross going to shut down. We're not going to do baptism, communion, baby dedication. So I had to figure out, how do you do that under these circumstances? The Lord gave me a strategy. And I keep telling you, whenever your life is faced with opposition or a problem or a brick wall, your prayer has to be, Lord, give me a strategy. This is the moment that God's releasing strategy that will thrust you into your potential. And so uh, I was sitting there praying, and then, and then it came to me. It's amazing that uh, this is family season, that one of the miracles that's happening in the middle of this plague is God's restoring families. You ain't spent this much time with your family, and God know how long. I mean, let's be honest. There are marriages that are that are, that are being rekindled, flames being rekindled, because now this pandemic will give you a reason to love somebody. Let me tell you something. If you're single, how they acting right now tell you whether or not you should even be bothered. I, I had a chance today to visit many of our members via Zoom. That's what we use. And uh, I want you to know that uh, there are our overcomers. It's an overcomers group. And I want you to get a pen and paper because I want to give you some text and information so that you'll know how to get connected. So if you want to be a part of baptism this Sunday, it's going to be powerful the way that God's going to do it. It's probably going to be something that nobody's ever seen, but new life, let's be honest. That's the oil God gave us a long time ago. Sometimes God gives someone who has the courage to be first. Uh, it takes a unique confidence to do things first. When you're first, you're talked about. When you're first, you're criticized. When you're first, you're taken advantage of. When you're, when you're first, you're taken for granted. But there are a lot, there's a lot of favor that comes with being first. And this weekend is our first baptism, communion, and baby dedication. It's going to be simple, and I don't want you to flinch. Those of you in this moment that are saying, I would like to be baptized. I, I would like to rededicate my life to the Lord because uh, we don't take time for granted. Here's the truth. It ain't about the water, and it ain't about the pool. What you're going to do if you want to be a part of the baptism, hear me, or baby dedication, there are two different text in codes, okay? It's two different text in codes, and there are two meetings that will take place on Saturday. I'm going to give you the codes. If you want to be baptized, you are texting NL baby, no, NL baptism. What's wrong with me? NL baptism to 84576. Okay. And if you're uh, having a baby dedicated, you're texting NL baby to 84576. Again, NL Baptism to 84576 or NL Baby to 84576. Just to put you at ease, all of our text ins probably will be to 84576. If you or you know someone who is sick, shut in, battling their faith, and they need to, uh, uh, I, I just want to look at them as, as your pastor. I have felt the weight of this moment. And so I've been trying to minister to it the best way that I can. And so what I want you to do, if you or someone, you know, is battling in their faith or their health, I want them to text overcomers to 84576. That'll be our prayer list where we're able to add names. And then I'll be able to do calls where today I spent all day pretty much just going, touching as many people as I can, the best way that I can under the circumstances, just because in this season, I believe that people need to know 
that uh, the kingdom is still intact. So I want to pray with you. I want to check on you. I want to make sure you're well, and I want to know what you need at the same time. Communion this weekend is going to be simple. The instructions for communion, and of course, you can get this on our social media. Those of you that are preparing your tithe and your offering, I want you to do that now. Uh, communion uh, requires, watch this, it will be family communion. When was the last time you served your family? So many times we can go to church and our whole family's going to hell. This weekend, fathers will baptize their sons and mothers will, will baptize their daughters. Babies will be covered by their parents. And, and even in, bapt in communion, we're challenging all of you to get a loaf of bread and some type of 100% juice enough to serve everyone in the family. I want the head of the household to serve the family. And it's going to be quite simple. But if you text in NL Baptism or NL Baby, you're going to get some information. Uh, we're going to have a meeting on Saturday for all of our baptism candidates. And then at, that's going to be at 1 p.m. And then our baby dedication candidates will be at 2 p.m. That one call will give you all the information you need to be a part. Pastor, can I share this with my family and friends around the country? A whole family may want to just get it together. In this moment, people's hearts are more humble than they've ever been before. Absolutely share it, but I need you to get the text in information so that they're present on Saturday for that call. Then at the same time, and I want you quickly to get your seed in the ground. The cross must continue. In this moment, we've got to minister to a moment we've never seen before. And in order to minister to that, I'm learning that you have to let, let shift settle so that you can let the settling uh, identify a need so that you can know exactly what to minister to. Man, my heart has been overwhelmed and burdened with uh, individuals uh, that I see are needing groceries, they're hungry. And so uh, I want to do something. Uh, the Lord's been ministering to me about how we're going to minister in this moment as a church. I need you to do that. And uh, I want you to, uh, if you need groceries, if you need groceries, I need you to text this in tonight. I need you to do it now. Uh, as uh, after we put this out this week, it's going to be a little touchy. Uh, the truth is I, I, the, the, I was sitting in my home the other day and then I realized this is a great time to put life at the city where, where uh, while so many people are starving for groceries on Saturdays, uh, I'm going to try to every Saturday as, mu as much as I can to have uh, a grocery store available with free groceries. And it's going to be very simple. Don't worry about it. You're not going to get out the car. You're not going to roll the window down. You're going to pull up, pop your truck, huh? Pop your trunk. We're going to put uh, bags of groceries in your car. And I'm going to stand right in front of you with a bullhorn and lay my hands on that car and pray God's protection on you and everything connected to you. So if you need if you need groceries, you're in the city of Detroit, you want to take City Give to 84576 so that you can be a part of it. That's why you should put your seed in the ground. Pastor, why should I sow? Remember, Genesis 26, you can't miss this new life. Sunday, I've got to make a very big announcement, and I need for you to make sure that you spread the word uh, that uh, one of the deceptions in this time is you can leave in and out of church services without nobody seeing you. But if you keep eating from all these other stranger tables, you're going to get sicker than you want to be. So I want you to I want to challenge you to be tuned into your church this Sunday. Again, I'll be, and I'm going to give you my schedule just so that you're aware, but I want you to take City Give to 84576 for those of you that need groceries. And then uh, in the next coming Wednesdays, you'll get information for the upcoming Saturday's groceries. You'll have to text in the RSVP so that we can make sure we've got enough groceries to go around. But there's some things we got to minister to in this moment. And this is what we're called for tonight. I want to challenge you in this moment to pay your tithe. How much is my tithe? We know it's 10% and new life. Here's the thing. This is the moment that we strengthen what remains. This the moment either you believe God or you don't. You have faith or you don't. And I'm telling you, for those of you that believe God, you got to sow in this famine. Do not fall for the deception of the enemy that cuts off your flow. Huh? It cuts off your flow when you don't sow. I want you to hear me. I want you to receive what I'm trying to teach you because God, what, what really just happened in the last couple of weeks is God really just completely shifted the earth to the place that he's, we've always talked about the shifting of the guard and the changing of the guard. Well, it just happened for real. It really just happened. There, there are different governors in the kingdom and in the earth. And what will establish the placement of individuals is their response. 
huh? Is there a response in this moment of famine? I want you quickly, there are three ways that you can give, and I want you to do that. If you're giving via Cash App, you're giving uh, to New Life Anywhere. That's on Cash App. <clears throat> if you're giving via Push Pay, you can do that. And then if you're giving uh, you, uh, your tithing offering, you can text NL Give to 84576. For those of you that say, no, Pastor, I'm not going to let this season scare me from sowing. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm putting my seed in the city because I believe God has a place for me in the next one. I need all of you to understand your faith is what shall keep you alive. This is the season you cannot live out of your doing. You have to live out of your being. That's why so many people are so frustrated because we, we're normally so busy doing, we don't have to be. We don't have to be who we are because we're so busy being occupied by what we do. What God has done in this time is he has shut down all of your doing. You can no longer live out of the doing. You have to live out of the being. And I'm telling you right now, in this season, the just shall live by faith. I want you to text keyword NL give to 84576. If you're giving via push pay, if you're giving via cash app, watch this. That's why as we're ministering to God's people, it's, it's a super soul Sunday. We got to minister salvation in the hearts of God's people that we're not just raising money, but at the same time, we're raising people. I want to speak to that Sunday as we minister communion, baptism, baby dedication, this moment while God has really made us lie down. It's a moment for us to revisit some of the fundamentals and foundations of our faith. We're going to talk about salvation and conversion, evangelism this weekend. How does that affect the believer in the earth? I want you to get that seat in. I want to pray. I want to pray. And I want to tell you about PW Live. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we thank you tonight. Because even in a bad circumstance, you're still a good God. And now as we sow these seeds, Father, tonight, I don't know what they're sowing from or what they're sowing for. Father, I pray tonight that for every sower, you would release a harvest of 100-fold. I pray tonight that you will release your peace that passeth all understanding. We'll give you, pra we'll give you praise. We'll give you glory. And we'll give you honor. We're holding fast to our faith. And something supernatural is going to shift by June, and that's all we can believe. And so until then, we continue to decree and declare that there is no lack, not in my house or in none of theirs. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. This Saturday is PW Live. I hope y'all checked it out. New Life, would you help me, man? When Pastor go live, jump on. Turn the man on in your notifications. Turn your church on because there's some things that God's really ministering to me about this season and I want to be able to have access to you. I don't want you to miss it uh, because you're detached or disconnected. I want you to make sure that you receive uh, what God has for us. This has been pretty dope. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Did y'all enjoy cooking on Monday night with Chef Tammy? It was living with PW. It was kind of dope, right? So on Friday morning, we'll be back on Zoom at 5 a.m. I'll do a Zoom prayer call at 5 a.m. on Monday morning and Friday morning, as well as you'll be able to call in for the conference call to make sure you're a part of it. And then on Saturday night, live at 5. Last week, it was Pastor John Hanna, Dr. Jamal Bryant, Apostle Mike Freeman, and Bishop Brandon Jacobs uh, to talk about where we are in the church, but this weekend is going to be good. If you know any musicians, tell them to tune in. We're going to talk about the state of the music department in lieu uh, as it relates to the local church in lieu of what's happened in this moment. And uh, on this Saturday, I'm excited about it. My brothers are jumping on. They go, they're not only going to minister to us, uh, but they're going to sing a song. Man, sing a song that, that gets you through the storm. Man, Pastor Tim Rogers going to be on. Pastor Ronzel Pretlow, Bishop Jason Nelson, uh, Bishop Marvin Sapp, and my brother Dietrich Hatton. It's going to be this Saturday live at 5. We're going to talk to you just about the shift in the earth. And then at the same time, they're going to minister a little bit of music to you. So get your family around, man. We might as well do it like New Life does it. I pray God's strength in your day. It's crazy. Even when you're online, after you've taught, the anointing always takes its toll on your body. So I pray wherever you are, you're safe, you're saved. And I pray that this word tonight changed the way you see things. If you're giving tonight, again, it's Cash App, New Life Anywhere. Mine is PW Live. If you want to sow, push, pay, however you want to do it, I want you to allow your faith to keep you afloat. 
in this season of your life. And I decree and declare that this sickness is not unto death, but only so that the glory of God may be revealed. I absolutely love you. I'm praying for you. I'll be back live 5 a.m. on Saturday and then on 5 a.m. on Friday, 5 p.m. on Saturday, and then 10 a.m. early on Sunday morning. New Life, tell everybody, be on. Pastor got something very important he wants to say. Merry Christmas to all and to all a great night. Be safe, stay saved, and stay home.